Sure. Okay, let, let's get started then. So, hello everyone. Um, I'm Dirk Grunewald. I'm the CEO of Digital Consulting House. And it's my pleasure to greet you here all at Print Day. And also all the people who are out there actually watching us. There are a couple of presentations coming up from uh, very um, experienced and uh, very uh, established speakers with a great expertise in all things PIM, MDM, and also the, the bigger thing, obviously, AI. And obviously, we are also talking about print here, right? Print integration. It's a print day. But print has one specific thing in, in, uh, in common uh, when it comes to all these different disciplines. It's exposing, it's brutally exposing any issues there might be in your data, right? You see what, you, what I have on my head here? We make data great again, right? You, and uh, it, it doesn't represent any political view. It just represents my view, which I have experienced over time on data. Because that's where all these initiatives of automation, of syndication, the grandiose strategic uh, schemes are all failing. It's on the data, right? Yeah. And, well, I'm doing that already for a while. So I, I, I say I would be able to say a little bit about it. I'm doing it now for almost 30 years, right? I'm, by trade, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. And um, as a mechanical engineer, sometimes you get into things like uh, manufacturing, right? And that's basically where my first uh, internships and where my first jobs were uh, in the manufacturing of rubber and plastic parts. And a lot of that is obviously used in the automotive industry. And 30 years ago, it was a big uh, subject um, of quality. Not just the quality of the data, but actually the quality of the things you make, right? And for that, you had these, uh, these new things coming up like ISO 9000, but also specific uh, quality initiatives ran by the automotive industry. The Japanese are always the ones who were well ahead. And, um, well, I, I, as a young engineer, um, started to help companies with... Uh, collecting well, the information, the data about their production, about their processes, for which you need all the master data first, right? The master data about the products, the technical properties, the things you want to measure, um, your machines. So we're talking about location. We're talking about vendors as well. We're talking about the customer, right? And I, I, I didn't know about any about MDM. I didn't know the term MDM. I didn't know the term PIM, I didn't know nothing of it. But I was already starting to practice these kind of things 29 years ago when I started my first business in that space. Actually, it was a company in Spain, uh, Sociedad Limitada, which was dedicated to the quality of manufacturing. And again, for that, um, you maybe some of you might uh, know a famous professor from the 50s and 60s who... Um, established all these disciplines of quality management and Six Sigma and data. Mr. Deming, he had that famous quote, in God we trust all others bring data. So that was all about data. So in order to do what I was doing, I had to learn everything about data. And Derek, would you say that now with AI, um, with Digital Consulting House, with making great data great again, data that was first only seen in um, in lean manufacturing yeah. or in Six Sigma um, search of excellence. Is that now finally transferring from manufacturing to wholesale and retail? Well, actually, data is everywhere. And one thing I also learned with my long uh, history also in digital production. So I was a long time also in the agency business, but we apply technology to marketing and sales, right? to companies like Publicis or Mekin Ericsson for who 25 years ago, the crown of advertising was the 30 second ad, right? The 30 second TV spot. In our days, it's all about technology, right? And uh, the same principles of Six Sigma, of quality, they apply to every place where you're dealing with data, in particular with master data, because if your master data is not right, then you won't have any of the results you are expecting. And also, 
uh, the famous and glorified so-called, and I always call it a little bit as fake news because it isn't what it's supposed to be, the glorified artificial intelligence, well, has nothing good to chew on if you have bad data. And then even these initiatives will not bear the results you're expecting. All right. And so we have been 30 years in the, the, the data revolution has been 30 years in yes. the making. Yes. What do you see for the nearby future? What well, for the nearby future, I see basically that, that people are getting drowned. Actually, today, uh, Print Day, Horst Huber, in his intro speech, was talking about that the velocity of change, and that's also the velocity, how much more information you have everywhere and which is, is uh, hitting your eyes every day, every minute, every second, is accelerating, it's still accelerating, it's taking up speed. And people are at the point, and companies are at the point, where they struggle of managing it. So um, there is this famous curve of adoption of technology, right? Um, I, I would say that with regards to AI, we are already beyond that phase of euphoria. We are already in the phase of big disillusion. If you look at all of these technology giants, how they are cutting back on everything, they consolidate, and they, they try to actually make some sense out of all of these AI investments for their customers, because their customers start to realize this is not the silver bullet. Yeah. It will not help me if I don't take care of the old fashioned 30, 40, 50 year old requirements of having your data in order. Yeah. How do you do that if you have an exponentially growing set of information and an exponentially growing set of channels for different groups of people I have to manage, right? From very young, the digital natives, right? the young folks who, like, like our son, and he's even a little bit old, they are now the younger, younger kids, like five years, and they are already, they are totally connected as if they have a, the brain already directly connected to their smartphone or to the other devices up to the aging population. We get older and older and older. Of my mom, for instance, who is 89 years old and doesn't have a smartphone, doesn't have an email address, it's totally disconnected, right? And watching television, right? And you have to keep that in mind when, as a company, you are selling goods and services, who your target group really is and what is relevant to them. And it might not be the latest feature uh, of AI, but it might be relevant at a certain point to use it the right way. And again, you have to, still you have to do all the things which is often neglected. You have to think people first. You have to think organization first. You have to think governance, right? Mm -hmm. If no one in your great digital group, digital department, is responsible for the quality of the data, then you won't have quality data. And if you, will not, if you don't have quality data, then all the initiatives you're running fail, right? And in particular, that comes out when you talk about print communication, which is in our days uh, often not really printed, right? You create these PDFs on the fly. You, it, it's, it's brutal. It exposes any little issue in your data and every little issue in your data will make your, what you are printing, what you are providing to your customers not look good. Yeah. Right? And I, I've seen these cases, um, well, it's like, Groundhog, it's like Groundhog Day, really. I, you, you wake up the next morning, and they are still the same issues. Right? You go to the next customer, they tell you, oh, we have our data in great shape. And then you dig a little bit deeper, and they have it. Yeah. Right? So governance, the people come first, that you organize yourself properly. Right? Then also, these people should know what they are doing. Knowledge. That, that has nothing to do with technology. People... <laughs> knowledge, and then also a process and a plan it would be nice. And then at the end, there are the tools. People often start their digital journeys when they digitalize their processes and everything. They start with the tools. They say, we need a PIM, right? and they buy a PIM. It doesn't help them. So, Dirk, it has been Groundhog Day for data quality for the last 30 years. Yeah, for me, it was 30 years, yes. We, we have, I mean, maybe even longer. 
we yeah. have seen all kinds of new tools, new data yes. sources, new, new yes. channels. Um, if you would go to a customer right now, like um, you're struggling with your data, where would you start? Where would you start? Yeah, I would, again, tell them, don't look at the tool. First of all, look at the people. And look at one other big piece. Actually, look into the mirror. If you are a leader of a company, look into what kind of culture did you instill or do you instill into your business. Because if you as the CEO uh, of a company do not make it a requirement that data quality has to be great or great again, then it won't happen. Right? So if you just think, okay, I, I introduce some great tools and I, I don't really care how my people do it, and they they ask actually for like for someone who is has this accountability and you don't take care for that, then you will never have the results. Right? So that's people and also culture. Culture is the other big thing. One man much wiser than I once said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Right? That's where it starts. So don't look at technology. Don't, don't care for it at all. It comes as the least thought, not as the first thought. But obviously, that is contrary to what all people probably around me are, are selling people. <laughs> because they are all technology consultants, technology companies. They want to sell their technology. Right? So they are telling them that story, which I call fake news. Right? Like, this, this guy who is wearing a very similar hat, right? Fake news. Because most of the things you are seeing in technology, even AI, what they call AI, is old wine in new bottles, right? Most of the machine learning algorithms, the machine learning models, um, which I'm seeing in our days, which are used, for instance, for onboarding data, auto classification, auto writing the description and all that, Actually, I have been taught these algorithms, these models, 30 years ago at engineering school. The only difference between then and now is the computing power. There were, when NVIDIA was actually in its infancy, and they started to uh, build the first graphics devices, in our days, obviously, it's a completely different story, right? Um, so, um, actually, that is the, the only difference. Real artificial intelligence, which means reasoning and making a conscious choice which model is the right one, and do the results even make sense which are coming out of these models, um, that capability is often not implemented. So, and again, then the old rule of IT applies, right? You put garbage in, you get garbage out. No difference. Groundhog Day again. 